Anyway, let's go ahead and begin up here looking at the brain stretch. So let's go ahead and talk about it. What do you know about the periodic table? So we are going to do something a little bit different. Before in um, our calendar and what we were going to do, I was going to have um, going to do notes today. But you know what? Because of um, going on spring break, what we are going to do is we're going to literally just start the unit two exam review today. So if you want to um, attempt it over our vacation, you can so that we don't um, – do any notes and then try to remember them when we come back from vacation. That would be no fun. So that is where we're at today. So what do you know about the periodic table? Well, you can make compound elements from a single element. That is absolutely correct. We kind of take and choose what we want from the periodic table. If I need sodium and chlorine together, I make sodium chloride, which is table salt. Absolutely. Atomic number and the amount of protons in the atom itself. Exactly. We just learned that on um, Wednesday. Absolutely. We're going to talk a lot more about that when we come back from vacation and um, how the periodic table is actually organized by that. So absolutely. Excellent. If you think of anything else as I continue on, please let me know in the chat box. But for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and um, go over announcements. And before I do that, I just want to make sure I have everybody here. So I'm going to take a quick view over making sure. I got everybody. I don't want to miss anybody today. All right. Beautiful. Good morning, Luis. How are you? I'm good here. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into this. And like I said, we are going to be doing something a little bit differently than we did um, when initially what I thought we were going to do. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this. Remember, Class Connect sessions are recorded and distributed for learning purposes. Please do not put any personal information or information of others into the chat box for your protection and the protection of others. Make sure you're school appropriate and respectful at all times. And like I said, when you get the opportunity, go ahead and make sure you're participating. Can it makes class go by faster. You get so much more out of class. And you know what? Your grade just is that much better. Trust me. All right. Let's go ahead and take a a look at our calendar so this is the end of week two of our 12 weeks together I cannot believe it we're gonna be going on vacation next week so hopefully you'll have a nice relaxing vacation and again use that time and opportunity to catch up if you need to it is day 13 of our 61 day adventure so it is Friday March 22nd and like I said is usually we don't do this um, usually we have a couple of lessons before we do this but because we are going on vacation, I thought maybe we'd just do it now so we don't um, start anything new. We're going to be introduced to the Unit 2 Element Exam. Now, you'll have plenty of time, even if you want to just kind of be introduced to it and work on it when we get back from vacation. That is cool. You'll have plenty of time to get this completed. Um, so just kind of be aware. So we're going to kind of flippy flop here. When we get back, we'll do our 2B notes. Uh, but today we're going to do that intro to Unit 2 Element Exam. This exam is not due until April 18th. We, even when we get back from our vacation, it will be April 2nd. So you will still have plenty of time to get this exam completed. Okay, so don't worry about that. Um, like I said, if you just kind of want to wait, if you have to still finish Unit 1, by all means, finish Unit 1. I know there's a lot that have been submitted. I have not graded those. I will grade those either tonight or this weekend. So just kind of keep your eye up if you're um, looking for it to see your grade go up or whatever. But um, I will go ahead and take care of that um, this weekend, okay? So with that being said, our exam will be due April 18th, so you'll have plenty of time to get it completed. Again, not many questions. It's still um, about 10. Maybe this one is 11. I have to check. But again, not extensively huge. All right, so here is our announcement. Now, obviously, yesterday you were to say you um, just turned in your unit one exam or your unit one food exam, hopefully. If not, that's okay. I'm not going to zero out this unit one food exam until Tuesday, April 2nd. So that's after spring break. So you'll have a whole week of your grade not being affected by not turning in your unit exam. Okay, so use that time to get that in there. Now, since this exam, we only have one exam, it is worth the whole 45% of your grade. So it's a big chunk. Obviously, as we go throughout the units, um, it, will, it will be evened out a little bit differently. Okay, so this is going to be a big chunk of your grade. So if you do get that zero on Tuesday because you haven't turned it in yet, 
you're going to see your grade drop. Okay, so make sure that you get it in. Like I said, during vacation, I may pop in and if I see anything I need to grade, I'll do it really fast so you have um, an immediate um, um, status update on your grade, okay? Now, even though you see a zero, doesn't mean you can't turn it in. So please make sure you do turn it in. Even if you can't do it over vacation, maybe you are leaving for vacation somewhere or you need to do family things and you just can't get it done, that's okay. Okay, you have... At, Technically, you have all the way up until June 7th to get all your work in to get passing. But you don't want to go that way. You don't want to go that route. You want to keep up on it because obviously we're going to be moving into another unit um, exam, as you can see today. So, um, But even if you do see that zero, that doesn't mean you can't turn it in. I do not dock any points for being late. I'm glad you turned it in. I'm super happy. So I'm going to give you... Um, whatever grade you deserve and not anything lower because of being late so make sure you do turn it in if you haven't turned it in I'll be grading it like I said this afternoon I know I see a lot of those exams up there in my grade book so I will be doing that this afternoon okay all right so today what we're going to be doing is obviously we're going to understand what is expected of us during this unit 2 element exam and hopefully by the end of today we'll be able to complete this exam on our own Okay, so here we are. I'm going to go ahead and um, show you that where we're going to find it. Now, this used to be a project, so this is going to now be in quiz form, just like unit one. Okay, you can find it in three places, the grades tab, the content tab, and the announcement section. I'm going to show you each of those three places, because even though we have already had our unit one exam, there are still people that are kind of like, I can't find the exam. So the jig is up. I'm going to show you the three places you can find it. Now, if you already know where to find it, and like I said, and I will actually, today I'll help you out, I'll actually put it up into the chat box there for you. So if you want to, you can go ahead and start opening it up. But for those of you who want to know where to find it, I'm going to go ahead and screen share with you exactly where to find it. Okay? So with that, let me go ahead and doo -doo -doo -doo, screen share here where to find this um, exam. All right, so three places. Like I said, the first place that I'm always going to direct you to is that Target, that one-stop shop, and that would be our Grades tab. When you click into your Grades tab, you should all of a sudden see something like this. Now, obviously, I'm on the teacher end, so and I'm you know, pretending I'm a student. So I don't have a grade up there. Good morning, Cheyenne. How are you? So I don't have a grade up there or anything. But um, it does look just like this, okay? You might see your grade over here, but anyway. So as you scroll down, you'll see the Unit 1 Unit Project. Now, if you haven't turned it in yet, you'll see something over here kind of in red saying overdue. But, you know, like I said, I don't charge you or I don't dock you for being overdue. Just make sure you get it in. And just a reminder, folks, um, I have a lot of people also asking me, there's no recording to this. Oh, there's a recording. They're right here. Okay, so click on that, and there's a Unit 1 exam. Now, if you come down just one more slot, you're going to see this kind of um, atom, this carbon atom floating around here. This is where you're going to find your Unit 1 or Unit 2 element exam. Like I said, here are the instructions that I will put in there. Since we are doing the recording right now, I will put those in there at the end of the day today or around one about 1 2 o'clock okay so it will be right in there and then obviously you can find your exam right here so here's the recording here's the exam that's spot number one spot number two is obviously in the content section okay now when you go into the content section you can go ahead and scroll down to unit two the periodic table click on that all of this will pop up you kind of already know that if you've been in class with us and you could go ahead now and scroll all the way down until you see the Unit 2 Element Exam. It's usually on the above the optional stuff. It's the last thing. So once you click on that, you will see the intro to the Unit 2 Element Exam recording. That's what we're doing right now. It won't be up there right now. So don't try to click on and say, Mrs. Pulvin, it's not there. I know because we're doing it right now. So I will put that up around 2 o'clock. But here is also your exam. Okay. Now, if you go ahead and go to your class homepage, you will also see it in your announcements. Now, you may not see it in your announcements 
quite yet, okay? Now, obviously, we were supposed to do 2B today, but we're not. So um, I will make that a change and that adjustment, and I'll put that in here, right down here where you see this. But like before, you will also see your um, this unit two exam up in that announcement section. Probably not until the Monday we get back. So use the other two versions in order to find your unit two exam, okay? Any questions on where to find anything? Any questions? Again, we've already been through this one, so you, you, know, you should put a pretty good um, idea. Good, thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Hope. Excellent. All right, so with that being said, awesome, Nicholas. Thank you so much for letting me know. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and head back. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give you just about 25 seconds to go ahead and get your exam open. Raise your hand to when you get that exam open so I know so that when we go through it, you're also going through it with me. Okay, so 30, I'm going to give you, I'll give you 30 seconds since it's uh all righty, here we go. Make sure you get that hand up there for that exam. So I also know that you've also, also found it yourself. Awesome. So Yami, Kitali, Cheyenne, and Mateo, Mariah, and Marcos. Make sure you get those hands up there. Alex and Alexia, um, Chris, Edgar, and Gavin, and Emmanuel, Isis, Jason, and Jasmine. Junior and Kimal, good morning. How are you, my friend? All right, Mariah. All right, beautiful, beautiful. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and go over this exam right now. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share with you. And like I said, um, when you opened it up, I did, I knew it was 11 questions. This one is 11 questions. It's one more than before. But like I said, it's not overwhelmingly um, really hard or long. Okay. So let's go ahead and go through this. Like before in our unit one, I also had the unit attached to it or the lesson that this question is attached to so that you can always go back to that lesson to find out what the answer would be. Now again, some of these answers or some of these things that we are going to see up here on our unit exam are going to be very, very foreign to us. We're not going to understand them. We're not even going to know how to do them because we haven't even done the lesson yet. We won't do that lesson until we get back from vacation. But at least you have an idea of what I'm expected or that you what is expected of you for each question, okay? So question number one is a multiple choice question. You are only to re require to answer one of those answers, okay? The question asks, where are valence electrons found? Now, we're going to talk about valence electrons when we are talking about lesson 2C. Electrons are obviously outside the nucleus, right? So we're going to have to talk about something outside the nucleus, okay? And so that will be in lesson 2C when we get back, okay? Question number two is, how many valence electrons does sulfur have? So here is the Bohr model, okay? Remember we talked about how the Bohr model may not be the, the most recent model for an atom, but for educational purposes, we will use the Bohr model a lot, okay? Yeah, we're just reviewing um, that. We're not going over any questions or we're not um, doing any questions. We're just reviewing, okay? So when you take a look here, okay, now, when you take a look at this Bohr model, you're obviously going to have to know what valence shell is or valence electrons are. Once you find out what the valence electrons are and what the valence shell is, then this will be pretty easy. All you're going to have to do is just literally count. Okay, this is um, this question only requires you to answer one answer. Okay, one answer on this one. And Lizzie, mm, I may private chat you. All right, so that is only we're going to require one answer. So question number three is talking about atomic number and atomic mass. Now, question number two, or excuse me, question number three has two answers. It has an A answer and it has a B answer. So a grand total of two answers for question number three. 
So here is that element tile here for gallium, okay? The first one question is going to ask us, what is the atomic number, okay? So you're gonna have to tell me what is the atomic number and that would be your answer for here. And for B is what is the atomic mass of gallium? So then your answer would be down here for atomic mass, okay? Again, a grand total of two answers for question number three. Okay, we'll talk about that when we get back on Tuesday in our 2B notes. Okay, question number four is going to be a math problem. Now, don't get scared about this because even though it is um, pretty kind of, um, it is actually very simple. Some people feel, find it very daunting, but it's actually very simple. But again, we'll talk about that when we get to 2B Tuesday when we get back from vacation. But it says, what is the atomic mass of an element? Well, you can, I already gave you the um, equation for atomic mass. It says atomic mass equals protons plus neutrons. So I've given you both of those. So all you would have to do is literally add these two up. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, make sure that you put the numbers in there. Okay, whatever numbers you are, please make sure that you put the numbers in there. The reason why is I want to see you set it up. If you just give me an answer, you're not going to get full credit for that. I want to see you actually set it up, okay? So make sure you do put your answers or your numbers from your problem, which is up here, into, your, into this, then add it up and give me an answer, okay? Question number five is asking you um, a couple of questions here, two questions, okay? The first question is A, and it's in pink. It's all the way at the very top, and it's asking us, how many valence electrons does arsenic have? Well, we've already done valence electrons on question number two, so this should, pretty, should be pretty easy for you to find out how many valence electrons does arsenic have. That would be answering A in my pink right here. So again, question number um, five has two answers. Question number B is right here, therefore, Okay, what family name is arsenic in? So let me show you how to read this chart. Once you discover how many valence electrons arsenic has, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna find out, I'm gonna find the number I found of how many valence electrons arsenic has. Once I do that, then I go across and I find the family name of that particular um, row. And I'm going to say group because we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But you'll find the family or that family name for that particular um, group, okay? And you're going to just answer that right here on B, okay? So you got to do a couple steps on this one. Number one, A, you got to find the number of valence electrons. Great. Put your answer right here. Secondly, now, once I know the number of valence electrons, I'm going to come over here to my chart and I'm going to look right here and I'm going to say, okay, well, if my atom had, you know, blank number of valence electrons, then I go across and I find my family name. That would be the answer for B, okay, the purple B. All right, that's how you do question number five. So two answers for question number five. Question number six is also asking me two answers, okay? There's an A and there's a B. Using the element from question number five, arsenic, okay? So we're going to use arsenic. We want to what? Gain or lose electrons. Well, again, we were not going to talk about that until we get to 2G. So you might have to wait a little bit on that. Now, I will briefly tell you that atoms do want to gain or lose electrons. It all has to do with this bonding thing and to be a happy little atom. We'll talk all about that when we get to 2G. But yes, atoms do want to gain or lose um, electrons. And so we, we will know when we get there how what arsenic would like to do just by looking at the valence electrons, okay? And then you're going to answer B. Well, how many? That's a simple math question, simple either addition or subtraction problem. And I'll show you how to do that when we get there, okay? So that is going to be question number six. Again, answering two answers for question number six, an A and then a B. Now, question number seven is going to use arsenic again, okay? And we are going to find arsenic, and we are going to determine if it's a metal, a nonmetal, or a metalloid. Folks, yes, can you use ptable.com to find that answer? Absolutely, ptable.com. So if you want to sit there and look and see what is arsenic, 
then go right ahead. Okay, then you have that answer. But there is also another way to do it. And I'm going to show you when we get to 2G. Okay. All right. So question number eight is another math problem. Don't be don't be scared of it. It's not daunting as it as it can seem. But we are going to use those integer rules. Okay. I know some of us may say oh, integer rules. Yikes. Okay. Don't worry. So what we are going to do here is we're going to discover what the charge of strontium is. I've given you what you need. I've given you the number of protons plus the number of electrons. Now, remember when we talked about subatomic particles, how electrons have a negative charge? Well, if they have a negative charge, they're also going to be a negative number. So when we put it in here, so for example, if I put 38 protons right here, and yes, put it on the line because I want to see your work, and then I put 36, which I already gave you the negative sign, now I'm going to have to add those up. Now remember, integer rules. When you're adding, unlike signs, it's like subtracting. And then you take the sign of the bigger number. Well, I already know that 80, 38 is bigger than 36. So I already know my answer is going to be positive. So it's really kind of a simple subtraction problem. Okay? So that's how you would do that one. Please make sure you fill in the lines here. If you're confused on how to fill in the lines, let me know. I can help you out. Now, numbers 9, 10, and 11 all have to do with electronegativity. We're not going to get to electronegativity until 2i and 2j, okay? Lessons 2i and 2j. Electronegativity is a simple definition. Again, we'll talk about this when we get there, is how well an atom can attract, ad or attract electrons. Amazingly enough, atoms like to attract electrons. Well, there are some atoms that can do it a lot easier than others. And we're going to talk about that when we get, um, talk about the um, periodic table. So we're going to, on question number nine, we're asking ourselves, which of these elements is likely the most electronegative? When we get there, I will tell you it's pretty easy to find out. This requires only one answer. It's a multiple choice here, okay? Question number 10 is now asking me which element is most likely the most electronegative. We have it in periods, and this is called periods, which is going across, okay, going across. And then we have electronegativity in groups, which is the columns going up and down. We'll talk about that when we get to 2J. Then we're going to put it all together, and I'm going to find which of these atoms is likely the most electronegative. Okay, I've given you a kind of a hint already there. And so again, all three of these questions, 9, 10, 11, are multiple choice. You only need one answer. When you are finished, obviously, go ahead and submit that, um, click that nice um, blue button there, and away you go. Okay, that is unit two exam. Like I said, there is a lot of stuff in here that you could probably figure out, and that's great. Go ahead and try figuring it out. Just make sure that you are um, that you are making sure that you see that little save sign. Now, I'm going to click an answer. I'm going to tell you right now, folks, this is not the right answer for number one. Okay, This is not the right answer. Why I'm clicking this answer is I want you to make sure that when you are working on this, and let's say you're doing it as we do the lessons or you kind of know a couple of those um, answers, make sure that you do see the word saved up here because then when you X out of it, you could just X out of it. That means that when you come back, this one answer or this question has already been done and you've already have the answer. You can move on to the next one that you haven't done. Okay. If you don't see that um, little check mark and saved, that's going to be, um, that's going to be a problem because then you're going to have to redo it. You don't want to do that. So just make sure you say that. Please don't submit it unless you are completed with it. Okay. Don't submit it. So just like, for example, you know, a couple of them already. That's great, but don't submit it because then if you need to go back in to finish the rest of it, you're going to have to redo the whole thing. Just X out of it. Just X out of it. You will be good. Okay. This will all be saved as long as you see that check mark and saved. Any questions? Any questions? Now, we do have about um, 14 minutes left of class. I'm going to give you this time to go ahead and either, you know, do the couple of questions that you may know already, and then um, let me know if you want me to check them in the question and answers box. I'll be happy to do that. 
um, you, yeah, like I said, you may be able to answer a couple of questions, even though we haven't done the lesson. You may be able to answer a couple of questions or do a couple of questions, and that's fine. Just make sure that you see the check mark and saved when you have, have completed it, but please don't submit it until you're all done with it, until you know the rest of it. And if you are like, you know what? I'm just going to hold off until after vacation. Cool. But if you haven't done the unit one exam and you're like, I kind of need to get that done, then make this time to do that unit exam here with me. If you have a question, I'll be here to help you out. All right. So a couple of options here. You could start working on unit two exam. That's cool. Or you could um, finish up that unit one exam or get started on that unit one exam, whatever it may be. But at least you have me here to help you out. Okay. So any other questions or concerns, comments, anything else that you need from me? Okay, so what we're going to be doing right now is what I'm going to do is at 9, oh, at about 9.48, 9.48, I'll go ahead and bring us back together. I will give you the end of the class word and then you will be free to go. Okay, so a couple of so at 9:48, I'll, which is in 10 minutes, I'll go ahead and give you the end of the class word, and then you'll be free to go. And I hope everybody has a wonderful and relaxing vacation. If you're going somewhere cool, or if you're even going on vacation or actual vacation, let me know in the chat box. I'll be jealous because I am staying home. That's it. My uh, one son has school still, so I'm still getting up early every morning. Boo! But my other one doesn't. So, ugh. Uh, it's tough. All right. So with that said, go ahead and get to work. I'm going to go ahead and quiet down and let me know if you have any questions.